welcome back. In this episode, we're going to take a look at how we can implement the View Model Locator Pattern in the Silverlight application, which utilizes the MVVM, or Model View, View Model Pattern. When you utilize this pattern, one of the key tenets is the ability to create separation of responsibilities between the view and its associated view model. However, one of the issues that plagues these type of projects is the ability to wire up the communication between the view and its view model. The View Model Locator Pattern can help facilitate this. In our example today, we'll set up a locator which works on based on naming conventions, and we'll learn how to implement this within your Silverlight application. Let's go ahead and get started. So before we get started writing code, let's take a look at what I've already done. The first thing I did is I went ahead and created a standard Silverlight application. I then renamed the existing views that come out of the box with this application and append, appended the suffix view on the end of the home and the about to view. This will allow me to use my convention-based approach to determine which view to, view model excuse me, should match up to the given view. I also then went and added the assemblies for the Ninject IOC container, as well as the, service, the common service locator assembly so that we can use the common service locator within our code base. First thing we should do is go ahead and create the logic that will allow us to de determine which view model should be associated with the view. So I'm going to go ahead and create a folder called MVVM here. Now the first thing I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and create a class called the Index Converter. The Index Converter is going to implement the iValue Converter and it's going to allow us to do our binding via the XAML. Now in order to save some time here, I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste in some code. First thing I need to do is make sure this implements the iValue Converter. And within my iValue converter convert method, you'll see the first thing I'm doing is I'm going to look for the, va the value passed in and convert that to a view model locator, which we'll create here in a second. I'm going to go ahead and get the view type. When this get view type is actually going to look at the stack trace, and that's down here, and determine based on the stack trace the calling view. I then am going to reach into my locator and grab the view model, which is going to be based off of my view. I'm going to go ahead and use our common service locator pattern to grab that. Now again, this is using inject internally. And then I'm going to go ahead and return that back to my XAML. So let's go ahead and create our view model locator. The view model locator is going to have a bit of logic, so again, I'll copy and paste that in there as well. Let's go ahead and move this to its own class for better organization. This view model locator is fairly simple, has one public method get view model type for view and what it will do is it will attempt to resolve the name of my view model based on the view and we're going to do this on a convention if it ends with view we're going to assume that it's this view we should swap that with view model and return that as our name we're then going to look at the the same assembly that the views found in and try to find a view model that matches that same name now one thing to understand here is we are making the assumption now that the view model and the view are in the same assembly. That isn't the case in your code base, you will need to change this. If our view model is not found, we're going to throw a view model type not found exception, which we need to create now. And again, this has some code, so we're going to go ahead and copy and paste in this as well. Let's go ahead and move that to its own file. Looks like I copied too much. There you go. It's just standard exception, just allows me to throw a typed exception. So that does it for my view model locator. That also makes it so that our index converter will compile. Once we've created both of these, I need to create some resource pointers to these. So I'm going to go ahead and go to my app.xaml. Inside of my app.xaml, I want to wire these up, which I've already done. This will allow me to use VM locator and VM index converter within my XAML in order to point to these classes. Now the next thing we want to do is actually go ahead to set it up so that when we create an instance of our home view model that we can use the binding we just created to set the data context. So let's go into our home view model. This is pretty straightforward code. I'm just going to copy that in. So basically what we're doing is we're saying our data context is going to be set to the value that comes back from our view model locator and our view model index converter. 
And I'm going to go ahead and do that in the About window. And I can actually paste in the exact same code into both windows. Now, one of the things I like about this approach versus some of the other approaches I've seen online is I don't have to specify via magic string either the name of the view or the name of the view model that I want to be um, injected into my data context. To me, I think that's, that adds some of the power here. So we've now set that up. We do need to do two more things before we move on. The first we need to do is set up an inject so that an inject can actually run. The next is, of course, create our view models, which will be bound to our views. Let's go ahead and set up our bindings for an inject. For this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a class, or method, sorry, called setup service location. This method is going to do a couple things. The first thing it's going to do is create our instance of our inject kernel. I'm then going to scan the kernel and use default bind, uh, default conventions to, to wire up everything. And we're going to say we're going to fund the assembly containing our home view model, which we haven't created yet, but that's fine. So it's going to scan my current assembly. And then I'm going to say go ahead and bind with default conventions. And then finally, because we're using the common service locator, I do want to create our common service locator and wire that up. So let's go to new inject service locator. We're going to give it our kernel. And then finally, let's go ahead and use our service locator. And we're going to go ahead and set the service locator or an inject service locator instance into our common one. And that's all I need to do. Now, of course, I still need to fill out and create my home view model. So let's go ahead and create a new folder called view models. Let's create a class called the home view model. Now our home view model needs to actually implement a view model base class, which we'll go ahead and create very quickly. This view model base class just allows us to implement the I notify, I notify property change in one location versus within each of our view models. And we're going to say this implements that. Now what I want to do as well is actually want to be able to set up a property that my view model can bind to my view so that we know which view model we're in. So let's go ahead and create a property and we'll call this string. Now I want to implement this via backing field. Now, because I have the about view, I go ahead and want to create my about view model as well. And let's better organize these by moving some of our classes around. We've now done everything we need in terms of setup to actually get our service location working. So if all goes well, I should be able to put a breakpoint in my constructor here to verify that my view model is being created via an inject in the service locator. And I should be able to run my app now and actually see everything work. Oh, forgot that. Silverlight and Firefox don't play well together, so it's not going to hit my breakpoint, but that's fine. Let's go ahead and bounce over to our screen, and you'll see that it does load into my home page, and you'll actually see that it says from home view model. And if I click the about, it'll actually switch over to my about view model. This tells me that my location pattern is working, my binding is setting up correctly, my data context has been set to the appropriate view model. All of that in about 30 lines of code, a few class files I know, about 30 lines of code, a little bit of binding magic within my, my XAML, and we now have a view model locator that works. And as long as you continue to follow the naming convention or extend it to meet your own naming convention, everything will just magically wire up for you and you no longer need to manually set the data context. So I hope you learned something, and until next time, 